Father, Jonathan and I began praying six or seven years ago in the sanctuary. The reason we, we kept coming once a week, not because of some sense of, of duty or whatever, it's, it's, it's that things happen. The Lord always liked to do something that we didn't count on every time we would get together so that it wouldn't be the same. And so now He's moving us into a new place where we will be able to truly lead this for Sanctuary for Children, for St. Elmo Avenue Baptist Church, which is where we are right now. Um, without the prayer, it's just man-made effort. A lot of uh, what I hear in churches, is, it's, it's a lot of like a formula or a way. This has worked before, this is what we have agreed on, and this is what we've seen be, to be successful. And, and setting out on your own it can be a little uncertain especially when you're investing a lot of resources so right now the lord has given me the definite assignment of praying for sanctuary for children and not to go to trinidad anytime soon even though that was rosie on the phone she's in the same mode that i'm in and you're in we happen to be the three directors of the board of sanctuary for children but right. you know that that's just the legality the fact is we're we're joined in prayer and friendship and all People say, well, why don't you raise money? Why don't you do this? You're supposed to be taking care of fatherless children or something. And no, God's saying a prayer, the prayer ministry. And that's what we're, that's what these videos are about. That's what Isaac was teaching us about, the prayer ministry. Mm-hmm. And that causes things to happen. Isaac had his testimonies and he was reserved about giving testimonies on camera because it, it seems like, oh, this is some fantastic thing I can understand his reluctance you don't know who's watching the video not everybody understands or sees that very well so you and I have plenty of stories the reasons he's sent me to Trinidad things that have happened there and at this particular time it's very clear that he wants prayer and that's the work of sanctuary for children at least it is for me it's, it's clear so in the process we've expanded this the prayer ministry to include every ministry that's in this building this facility as well as as whatever god puts on us but i don't know if you had time to just name some of the ministries that are housed in this building sure the newest is called haven's rest it's a ministry to homeless families works with family promise we also have the widow's harvest ministry which is specifically for widows it's uh, widow's harvest international it yes. has locations around the world and it's housed right. here in this building that's right Okay. Um, also, we have a K through five homeschooling uh, association here called Classical Beginnings. Um, they meet from uh, eight to noon, and then I, they go for the afternoons back to their homes to learn as well. We have the largest food box ministry in Hamilton County, also housed in our building called Hakoba Care. We have a church that's made up principally of Guatemalans that we have given our main sanctuary to because they've grown grown so quickly. And they seem to be filling that one up too. They, they are. Okay. They've grown dramatically since uh, we let them have the sanctuary, main sanctuary. Every Tuesday when we are meeting, there's usually a ministry of Church of the Firstborn, uh, one of their um, like halfway houses. It's called a um, house of refuge for people who are struggling with addictions and things of that nature and they meet down in the fellowship hall and just to kind of clarify uh, these are not church programs under St. Elmo Avenue yeah. Baptist Church they're entirely different ministries like Buddhist Harvest International Sanctuary for Children is for fatherless these other ones are not really connected with St. Elmo Avenue Baptist Church and I think what what happened is this this building was given to St. Elmo and his Baptist Church, and it used to be a large, that was the name of the Baptist Church, large mm-hmm. Baptist Church at the foot of Lookout Mountain. And the facility is enormous, and so one of the main services that, that St. Elmo Avenue Baptist Church provides is to provide a facility and housing for all these other ministries, even though they're not connected. So That's right. the building itself does a lot for the body of Christ. Yeah, this, that's that's well, what Pastor... Uh, Roger Kittle is very excited about. And what I, what we call the prayer ministry is an independent ministry, mm-hmm. independent from 
the, this Baptist church. A lot of the same people are involved, and the purpose um, is to drive the ministries that, are, that God gives us to drive. And we hope that that there's involvement. Oh, we we left one out is Isaac's ministry. Yes. It can definitely connect with his right. future life ministries in Kenya, Africa. They, you know, these names all sound like oh, it's just a, another ministry. No, it's not. It's a lot of people, and it means an awful lot to me. Yes. And uh, each one of them does. But I don't know if you have anything else to say about the prayer ministry that we're doing. I uh, do. I, okay. Maybe you can speak to this. But when we say prayer ministry in people's minds, that'll make them think of a huge variety of different things based on their experience. You know, that for them, prayer is defined this way. Uh, or if they've heard of a prayer ministry before, they expect it to be this way. But we find that God takes us beyond um, the traditional teachings about prayer, and He teaches us Himself. Now, I know when I ask the question, what is prayer? And, uh, you'll say, a simple explanation or definition of prayer is talking to God and God talking to you. And God cannot talk to you when you don't give Him a chance to talk to you. So it's a two-way. You talk to God and God talks to you. And that's why it is important after prayer, whatever kind of prayer you are offering that I'm going to talk about later on in this teaching, you listen to what God is telling you concerning what you have prayed for. And that is very important because when you don't train your spirit to hear the voice of God, then you'll be hearing the voice of the devil or you'll be hearing your own voice. For them, prayer is defined this way. Uh, or if they've heard of a prayer ministry before, they expect it to be this way. But we find that God takes us beyond um, the traditional teachings about prayer and he teaches us himself um, about prayer. And we've been experiencing that for the last six to eight years together. God teaching prayer is a whole big subject that I could talk a lot about. And I hope that you add a lot to it. Okay. Okay. Okay.